Okay, welcome back to another video for my Dreamcast graphics engine and this is the first update since February this year so what have I been doing since then? So the main objective has been to try and optimize the performance. I was really hitting a wall for kind of the polygon limit and the depth of field and light bloom effects were really causing problems. So the level format has been changed quite a bit so at the moment it's using these cubes, I've called them blocks, for drawing the level. So you end up with something quite similar to the first System Shock. Now each of these blocks is composed of 16 smaller ones. So the idea is, unless you really need the fine detail, like corridors, you can just render it in this crude way. And for areas that you need the detail, it will render um, those with that kind of detail. The thing that it's not doing at the moment is putting fine detail where you've got the edges of shadows so at the moment you'll see there the dynamic lighting's working but it looks a bit crude because it's just lighting these large tiles the whole block and I don't really want it to do that, I want it to be a bit more fine. So you see this is running at 60 frames a second uh, I'll turn this stats menu off because it gets a bit distracting so you'll see here the other thing that's been added are emitters. So this is like a steam emitter. The other one you've got here, aside for some slightly dodgy um, wall clipping, which I need to fix, is another one which is like a I'll say sprite. It's like um, a spark sprite emitter. So you've got gravity and they fall to the floor and burn out. So if I go into here, ah uh, yeah, one thing you'll see is when the player hits one of these walls he stands on top of it so if the camera moves up and down that's why so if I turn on the depth of field effect which you won't really notice much of a change but if I increase the strength you'll see it go up so I can set the strength of the effect and I can set the distance so for example anything up close is in focus and anything further away is blurred. So this would be quite good for a horror game or if you're using um, an effect where the player was focusing on a particular object so anything further away is um, is blurred. But the good thing from this is you know, this is all running at 60 frames a second so it doesn't affect the performance at all. So I'm really happy with that. There have been some changes to the Callistos development kit or the development library and that's made rendering to a texture much much faster so there are some underlying changes to the driver there which is brilliant uh, so the other thing to show is the light bloom now this does take a slight hit for performance so if I enable the light bloom you'll see that what you've got is a typical blooming effect it looks really good on the the steam emitter and with your sparks, you've got, if I get a, down a little bit and get a bit closer, there you go. You'll see it, it looks quite good on that. Uh, the other thing that you've got, once the player gets out of the scenery, is there's like a fake HDR effect going on in that when you get closer to these light areas, so this has got a light level of 100%, this has got a light level of 0 what it does is it draws cubes effectively, uh, white cubes that cause the bloom effect and the closer you get to them it gets more transparent which kinda works. Um, the other thing you can do, and this is where the performance does take a hit so at the moment if I turn the menu back on I'm getting about 30 frames a second for the most part which is okay. What I can do is increase the strength of the effect and what what really causes performance is the bloom is drawing all the highlights onto a transparent texture that covers the entire screen and that's what's hitting performance. So if I do two textures, okay, one texture, two textures, three, four, you'll see the effect looks really nice but it takes a hit. So you'll see that really is quite strong so one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers and the same there one layer, two layer, three, four 
it's it's taking a hit. Uh, the other thing you can do is set the the amount of blurring. So if I increase that, I'll put it on two layers. You see that goes down and up, which makes the effect a lot stronger, but doesn't really hit performance as much. Um, the thing that's hitting it in this room is this. So if I stand away from that, it shouldn't. Oops, it shouldn't be uh, quite as bad. I can also set how transparent it is as well. So you see there. Um, but I haven't got that set to the, the joypad at the moment. So yeah. So depending on what's being drawn you can get 30 frames a second on that. So if I turn the there you go. Just set the uh, the blur level down a bit. You see the, uh, the bloom working quite well. probably the best for that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the thing I need to do now is just make sure that the dynamic oh, turn off. The dynamic um, lights are, or rather the edge of where the light and shadow meet, uh, the penumbra, I think that's what it's called, uh, is using this fine level of detail so it, it really looks like a proper shadow rather than it just you know, clumsily lighting these whole blocks. And there's probably a few more optimizations. So for the most part, I'm getting between 20 and 30 frames a second. Um, it's just particular things that cause the, the frame rate to go down. So if I try and inspect that, I mean, even with all that bloom, that's running at 30 frames a second. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see the, the huge difference you get when you set the effect to be a bit more... Uh, strong, but it, it hits the frame rate unfortunately. So I'll probably just set the uh, transparency down a little bit, make it a bit more opaque, um, set the radius up a bit, or rather the the radius, the the amount of blur which causes it to. It looks like the radius of the the blur, uh, the bloom is a bit higher, but yeah, waffling. So yeah, um, quite a lot of scope to improve this. Uh, just need to make a, a better level editor, which works in game on the PC version. It would work on the Dreamcast, it just has a, a rendering glitch on, on how it displays the font, so I've not really shown that here. Yeah, lots of scope to do, so thanks for watching and hopefully there'll be another video soon.